hitting the road again for more grand days out around our beautiful country. The sun is shining, the birds are singing. And as always, taking me every mile of the way, my hard-working little camper van. <laughs> Named after one of my favourite people, Helen Mirren. Are you happy, Helen? Yes, I'm having a lovely time. She's the perfect travelling companion. <laughs> for great adventures, on foot. I've got my own boat. <laughs> all across the country. Eh? Eh? I'll be going all out. What a treat! To find stunning places. Oh, it's beautiful. Explore hidden treasures. Nick! Look at this place! And meet wonderful people. They're very good, Jimmy. It's a celebration of some amazing sights. Oh, I love it. Both big. It's the vastness of it. Wow. And small. <laughs> so come and join me. <laughs> on my grand days out. This time I'm exploring the fabulous Yorkshire Valleys. Oh, this is absolutely cracking. Discovering new stories about old places. The stained glass is extraordinary. Finding hidden gems. Even that's quite heavy. Kicking up a storm. Hold me, Andrew. <laughs> and appreciating some of the finer things. This is mine, just buying cake stands. <laughs> Who can this be? All over this wonderful county. Yes! So it's fair to say I've been to Yorkshire a few times now, but I've set myself a, a special mission. And I want to see some of the bits and pieces I might have driven past before or walked past. Some of the more obvious things, if you will. Yorkshire is amazing, and we never tire of visiting. But there's so much to see and do that Helen and I have overlooked some gems. It's easily done. I used to go past mushrooms every day in the supermarket, and I thought I hated them, and then I tried them, and I loved them. So that's what this is. It's a journey to find my inner fun guy. You're very welcome. With spectacular rural scenery and important historic architecture, Yorkshire has 800 areas of conservation. Snape, with its listed castle and its stunning countryside, is the perfect place to plan an adventure. Although travelling with Helen is always an adventure. One of my favourite things that happens whenever we trundle into a car park is uh, people just want to take the picture with her. You know, I've been asked to move out of the way so someone can get a better selfie. Quite right, too. She's a piece of history, and I mean that in the nicest possible way, and I'm interested to find out with her what history Yorkshire has to offer. Thank you for letting me use your windscreen wiper, Helen. We are here. That is Snape Castle. It is blue on the map, but not blue in real life. We are starting in the parish of Skelton on Ure, then motoring onto the city of York itself. From there, we'll head up to Thorpe Perrow and loop back to finish in the spa town of Harrogate. You might be thinking, Susan, surely there's a straighter route. Yeah, there is. Do you know what? That's not how Helen and I roll. If there's an easy way to do it, it's not what we like. Right, Helen? I mean, she's quite quiet on the matter, but... And here in Skelton on Ure, there's a place that's caught my eye. This is a driveway the length of a motorway. <laughs> I think this is the driveway. But it's worth the journey to reach Newby Hall, an amazing stately home owned by the Compton family, whose ancestors are said to have been an inspiration for Downton Abbey. Oh, that is a stunning house. Because I'm with a VIP, I've been told I can just let myself in. <laughs> the house is thought to have been originally designed by Sir Christopher Wren himself. It's a beautiful, glorious place. The walls of this grand drawing room are covered with tapestries. And I mean, <gasps> what a statement room. Only the most honoured guests would have been invited to have tea on these original Chippendales. So I don't think I'd be sitting having my beans on toast in a room like this. When I was growing up, we had a room called the end room. You might have it, it was like the posh living room that was locked. And so if you had visitors, you would go to the end room, it was called. This is what I imagine 
a very, very rich person's end room would look like. So if you had guests, you'd go, no, come into the tapestry room. Please enjoy yourself. And as posh as that sounds, this place has something even Downton can't match. Sitting on the table here is uh, this incredible collection of sparkly things. Yes, that's a replica of the crown jewels. I mean, even that's quite heavy. The real ones, I think, weigh an absolute ton. Robert Viner, ancestor of the Compton family, was goldsmith to the royal family and oversaw the creation of the originals. But what a lovely thing to see. And it's the story behind it, that's the thing. It's because the family have that link to something which is part of history. And there's more history for me to discover in the grounds of the stately home. It's just a hop, skip and a jump to a fantastic museum of teddy bears. Director Stewart is on hand. I had a teddy bear when I was younger uh -huh. uh, called Snowdrop. Lovely. Uh, Snowdrop had a tartan tummy that was worn away because I hugged it so much. Oh, bless. And I think most people remember a teddy that they had at some point. Did you have a teddy, Stuart? I did. It was a panda <laughs> and its little curly fluff went like that on my nose. I haven't got it now. <laughs> no one... Oh, oh no, sure, sure. <laughs> no one was suggesting I had it now. There's a great sense of nostalgia. It's in everybody's life, isn't it? Everybody can identify with the teddy bears. Mm -hmm. This purpose-built museum houses over a thousand vintage teddies, all posed rather beautifully. This is spectacular. They even have some celebrities. No, that's from my childhood. I feel quite starstruck that this is an actual city. Yeah, what's beautiful is look at the wear on his paw. Uh, from using his magic wand. He's a magic wand. <laughs> He's a busy bear. <laughs> he was a very busy bear. And apparently there's a VIP plus. You don't need to tell me. <laughs> you know where you know what you're who looking this at. This is <laughs> wonderful Paddington bear. Yeah. This is it. It's the stop motion animation one that I remember absolutely from my childhood. Absolutely, and yeah. that's it. That's it. So my working goodness. joints moved a fraction, and you can see his nose moves a little <gasps> bit for the expressions. And eating the marmalade sandwiches. Can you remember him doing that? Oh, yeah. Yes. Always got one under his hat. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. There we go. Now, you'd think nothing could top Paddington, but this museum is also home to an international icon of comedy and one of my childhood heroes. <laughs> Save the best to last. To most people, it is. And uh, this is Fozzie Bear. This is an original Fozzie Bear. This is Bear. one of the absolute originals that was used on the TV series um, donated by the designer. Could you... <laughs> Strangest thing I've ever said. Could you leave me on my own with Fozzie Bear for a moment? Because there's some things I want to say to Not normally him. allowed, but... Is, is that OK just for me? Absolutely. I promise I won't absolutely. do anything. Thanks, no Stuart. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. So, I asked Stuart to leave because I was slightly frightened about uh, quite how emotional I was getting. Fozzie Bear is one of the most important people, I think, in my life. I became a stand-up comedian years ago because of Billy Connolly and because of this bear, like literally this bear, because Fozzie was a stand-up. And he would wiggle his ears and he'd go walka, walka, walka. And this, <laughs> I've done it myself. Sometimes Fozzie would stand on stage, he would tell a joke and go, ah, ah. And I have done that myself. <laughs> I cried when I interviewed Billy Connolly. And it's exactly the same meeting Fozzie Bear. Walka, walka, walka. Newby Hall has one more calm and sized treat. Running through the gardens and along the River Ure is the Royal Scott locomotive. Oh, hello. Looking after this stunning miniature steam train today is Bob. This is one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. She's a lovely lady, isn't, isn't she? she isn't she lovely? Yeah. <laughs> it's like stars in their eyes. I enjoy it. Tell me, I need it's... this light and it's a filter. <laughs> Tell me about this chain. It's 70 years old this year. It was built by an engineer in the Midlands in his garage at the back of his house. No! It uses real coal, real water, and it makes, as you can see, real steam. So it's just like one of the big ones. Absolutely. Keep piling coal into it, yep. keep control of it. So we need to put a little bit of coal okay. in it for, me... to get us ready. Uh-huh. I mean, it, it's... Okay. And stick it in. That there is. we go. And how long have you been driving the team for? It's my third season here, but I've been coming here for about 30 years. Really? I brought my children when they were that high, oh. and they now bring their children. Do you know what I love, Bob? It's like you're talking about the love of your life. When you talk about <laughs> her, there's just this joy that radiates from you. 
Is there anything I can do before she sets off? You certainly can, yes. If you'd like to put some oil in. A good old fastened there. oil can. With genuine steam engine oil in okay. it. Okay, little squirt. It's like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, <laughs> feeding the Tin Man. This lovely lady takes around 50,000 passengers on trips through the Newby Hall grounds each year. Oh, ho, 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 ho. But few of them get a ride to themselves. A friend of mine said the thing about the steam train is it's theatre, and it is. And it feels special. Apologies to Helen Mirren. <laughs> it's one of the most exciting things I've ever travelled on. It is spectacular. Oh, we're coming up to a tunnel! <laughs> it's just a moment! They've got a sign to check your head can fit through the tunnel. I'm absolutely fine. This is like the best roller coaster in the world. Without that, but with all the... Yes! <laughs> Flooded a tunnel before. Oh, that was beautiful. It's one of those ones where words don't do it justice. You just have to look at my face. Can't smile any bigger. Thanks, Bob. Coming up, I'm on my best behaviour. My hands are in my pockets. <laughs> and I am frightened. And I find myself in need of a hand. Hold me, hold me, I'm having a grandy out around the Yorkshire Valleys. It's quite nice, I think, sometimes to visit parts of the country at different times of the year. You know, there's always a temptation to go on your summer holidays. But actually, it's quite nice to come slightly earlier in the new year when everything's just bursting into bloom. Nothing quite like a bright yellow daffodil on a beautiful green backdrop to cheer the soul. My next stop is the city of York, 25 miles south of Ripon. York is the birthplace of two of my favourites, Dame Judi Dench and the Yorkie Bar. It's also famous for its rich history and has one of the best preserved medieval streets in Europe. I'm going for an amble on the shambles. Originally, this place was called the Great Flesh Shambles, which sounds pretty horrific, doesn't it? Because in the 1200s, it was full of butcher shops, and in fact, that's part of the architecture. They're kind of designed to lean inwards to cut out the daylight so the meat wouldn't rot. Mmm! No, nowadays it's full of lovely independent shops and places we can get absolutely not rotten meat. Said to be one of the most haunted cities in the world, York is rumoured to have 500 ghosts. And apparently that's what draws in lots of visitors. Do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> not really. Not really. <laughs> I'm with you, it's all safe. <laughs> I love ghosts. Do you? Yeah, I'm a bit of a spiritualist. Myself, oh, really? So I don't mind ghosts. Because there's a ghost of the shambles, apparently, that wanders up you and down. You just said hi. Yeah, <laughs> that's what, I've seen a ghost and I just said hi as well. <laughs> did you? I did, absolutely, I did. That's lovely. Well, a ghost or a very pale tourist. Either way, you can't go wrong with a cheery hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You look lovely. Around here, even the street names are cheerful. So. Right at the end of the shambles is this, it's a whip ma whop ma gate um, I'm not entirely sure what it means, and from chatting around, I'm not sure anyone genuinely knows what it means. It might be about whipping or whopping or gates, but sometimes, sometimes it's good to leave things with a bit of mystery. <laughs> Helen and I are going to stop at what must be York's most monumental spot. The immense York Minster. This is a prime example of a historical national treasure that's been on my radar for a while. I've known about it, but not really investigated. And certainly Helen and I have never been here. So, Helen, you enjoy the view from the outside, and I'm going to pop inside. A national treasure beside a national treasure. 
York Minster had just over 620,000 visitors last year. It took 250 years to build what is now one of the largest Gothic cathedrals in Europe. The tower is estimated to weigh the same as 40 jumbo jets. And this central area, the nave, is the widest of any Gothic cathedral in Britain. My goodness. It is glorious, isn't it? It's one of those things that, you know, having been in cathedrals before and large churches, it always takes your breath away. The stained glass is extraordinary. This is called the heart of Yorkshire. And apparently, if you kiss your partner underneath it, you'll be together forever, which is nice. <laughs> Helen's not here. My better half's not here. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be with myself forever. For you. I'm sure I'll be very happy together. And it's clear that a lot of love has been lavished on one of the cathedral's most striking features. The east window is one of the most famous stained glass windows in the world. And Professor Sarah Brown, head of the York Glaziers Trust, is an expert. Hi there, Sarah. How are you? I'm very well, Susan. Tell me why this window in particular is so recognised around the world. Well, it's one of the biggest windows okay. ever made in the, the Middle Ages. What time period was this made in? It was made between 1405 Oof. and 1408. Gosh, so it's extremely old as uh -huh. well as being very large. These windows have been protected by the people of Yorkshire throughout history. And when danger has threatened, they took a typically direct route to guarding them. How did that survive something like the Second World War? Well, in almost the minute war broke out, they were taking glass out of the windows and then the country houses of Yorkshire volunteered their basements and secret spaces and the windows were crated up and transported to a variety of locations. No. We still have a list. York was bombed in April of 1942 Lives were lost and buildings destroyed, including the medieval Guild Hall. Luckily, these precious windows were safe. And there was one slightly fragile, tatty paper list of where they'd all gone. And it beggars belief, you know, how they, they would have got back. them back if they'd lost that list. But isn't that just a beautiful thing? That is, exactly. do you know what, I hate to say it, but it's so Yorkshire. <laughs> that is so Yorkshire. <laughs> it is. Will you hide this for me yeah. and then Bring it back. Exactly. So yes. I love that. Mm. That's the kind of story I love. Mm. The windows are here for all to see, and the constant restoration is normally out of bounds. But I'm being allowed into the studio to view these amazing works of art up close. Hello. Who's this we're speaking to? This is Susanna. Susanna, I'm just letting you know, my hands are in my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> I am a very clumsy woman, and I am frightened, because I know this is... An incredible treasure, isn't it, Susanna? It really is. It seems to me you would have to be quite you patient. Have to be quite patient. I think also bravery as well. You have to be really brave to just go straight in and, and trust that you have the skills to take out a head without yeah. smashing it. Do you get the fear sometimes? I do, especially moving these panels, because mm -hmm. they're enormous, and you need quite a bit of strength to move them around. Mm -hmm. Today, they're restoring a window of 152 panels of stained glass. The cleaning of each panel can take up to 30 hours, which means there's more than six months' worth of work in this window alone. You're getting to see really close the details and the true colours. Mm. It's kind of like you're revealing magic. One of the things that I love the most is when you find little inscriptions from previous interventions and glaziers in the past. Is that one there? It is, yeah. What does that say? It's just a little number, so it's probably used to organise the restoration Maybe scheme in the past. Maybe when putting it back in again. Yes. <laughs> kind of like putting together an Ikea, yeah, Ikea exactly. furniture with exactly. the doing that. <laughs> Definitely. It has been wonderful to talk to you both. I know this is really special to be allowed to be this close to the stained glass, so thank you very much indeed oh, for that. You. So I'm now going to leave your workshop. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely to know that York's ancient treasures are in hand significantly safer than mine. But just outside the city, there's something more modern I want to try. I've seen an awful lot of history on my trip to Yorkshire this time, and I've loved it, and I always do love it. I kind of want to see 
something that's a little bit newer, a little bit different. I'm going to a sporting arena where two old sports combine to make a new one. Kieran is in charge. Imagine golf. I, I love of, golf. But instead yeah. of hitting a golf ball, you're mm -hmm. kicking a football. OK. And we just have bigger holes. But it's based on golf. We've got the scorecards, we've got flags. But it's a, a bit easier than, than hitting a little golf ball. Well, I'll be the judge of that okay. later <laughs> on, whether that's easier. <laughs> Foot golf started in 2008 and has become one of the fastest growing sports in the UK. There are over 250 courses, and it's estimated that up to 100,000 people play every week. OK, here's the thing, Kieran. I'm quite good at sports if it involves something I hit. So Sounds I can, quite aggressive, I can, that. I can, it's not. So, it's just I've got great hand-eye coordination. OK. Right? Hand-eye. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, OK. Foot. Foot, yeah. Less, go, less it... sure about it. Yep. Is there someone who can help me out a bit because I'm a bit nervous about trying it myself? Well, I've got one guy that's waiting for you, actually, on the course. OK. All I can see is, fingers crossed, that... You might see, not I can't even cross my fingers, I'm so nervous! <laughs> Like in golf, the aim of the game is to get the ball in the hole in as few kicks as possible. And I hear my coach Andrew is as good as they get. Hiya, Andrew. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you. You're the person to speak to about foot golf, is that right? Um, yeah, I've, I've played a bit. That sounds understated. What do you mean by you've played a bit? I've been playing foot golf for approximately eight years now. That's a um, long time. And I've just recently been named the England captain to go to the World Cup. That must be pretty amazing. Yeah, it was something that I'm privileged to have been asked to do. We're going to go to Florida mm -hmm. in May to play the World Cup. So it's big. So it's big, it's yeah. Big. It's my first game. I'm up against the England captain. And I'm playing a par three hole. What could possibly go wrong? You're the captain of the England foot golf team. So teach me the ways okay. of foot golf. No surprise, he's straight onto the green. Just walking away. That's perfect. No! I'm in the rough. You're good. I'm in the rough. I have to get this onto the green. Yes. For a perfect. chance at making par. Yeah. So now it's putting. Yeah. Never my favourite part of golf, but... <laughs> There's a par. <laughs> she did it. That means Andrew needs to sink this putt to win. Oh. No luck. An unexpected draw on the first hole. Andrew doesn't seem too bothered, though, maybe because he knows what's coming next. It looks to me like there's a hazard. There is. That would be a water hazard. So you're going to do it? OK. Big run up. He's over it in just one hit. This is like one of those go hard or go home. Yeah. I'm going to go hard. OK. Not hard enough, though, it seems. I've got to go over the water now, but I'm ready for it. Is it the water? Straight in! This calls for a bit of expert help. Hold me. Hold me, Andrew. I've got it, OK. You live with the decisions you make in life. I made the decision to go for it. This seems impossible. <laughs> if I go in again... It's still worse. <laughs> it hasn't moved. <laughs> All right. Ah, yeah, OK. Right? Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, come on now! Come on! With my dropped shot at the water trap, it won't be enough to win. But I've saved a bit of pride. It's a gimme. I'll touch it in. Touch it in. Well played. Thank you very much. Even against a professional. Narrowest of victories, I think you'll agree, though. Hopefully the Scotland manager is watching. Coming up, a tasty treat in an iconic venue. This is my I'm just buying cake stance. <laughs> and a unique experience in the woods. Shall I turn you around a couple of times? Nope. I'm having a grand day out exploring the magnificent Yorkshire Valleys with my trusty steed. The sun's coming out in Yorkshire, although it doesn't need to be sunny. I think it's very well known, and if it's not, let me absolutely confirm, I love Yorkshire. I love coming here, I love visiting here, I love the people, I love the countryside, I love the food. 
There is very little about Yorkshire I don't love, and I, I, Helen agrees. I'm leaving York behind and heading north to Thorpe Perrow. But I've time for a quick detour en route to the town of Harrogate. <laughs> Helen and I can't resist a cheeky pit stop. When you get back from Yorkshire, people will often say, did you have tea at Betty's? Now, you might be forgiven for thinking that Betty is just a really friendly woman who'll offer anyone a cuppa. And in a way, you'd be right. These tea rooms are a Yorkshire institution. The first one opened right here in Harrogate, and they've been serving tea for over a hundred years. The first thing that hits you is the smell. It smells unbelievable. I wish there was smell of vision so you could just take it all in. And you're greeted by... How much pastry is too much pastry? Good question. Um, lots and lots of cakes. I mean, chocolate eclairs. That's one of my favourites. I love a chocolate eclair. Absolutely glorious. Ellie is a bit of an expert on Betty's, but I'll start with the basics. Who's Betty? Well, actually, it's a bit of an unknown family secret. There's a bit of a theory where one of the board members, her granddaughter, actually walked in accidentally holding a tea tray when they were trying to figure out the name of the business. And, um, yeah, her name was Elizabeth Betty Rose. So that's a little bit of the theory, but it actually is unknown. What is the biggest seller at Betty's Tea Room? I think it must be the Fat Rascals. OK, so what is a Fat Rascal? So we would say it's halfway between a scone and a rock cake, so it's full of, of currants and candied orange peel, a little bit of spice. It's just, it's beautiful. Get a Fat Rascal out. OK, so it's a substantial thing, isn't it? It right. is. It's got a wee face on it. It does, it? yeah. Now, yeah. I'm going to buy this, so I just want you to know... Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, you can smell it. I'll have to take some home. And I've got my eye on one more treat. Could I have um, one of your delicious chocolate eclairs? Of course you can. That's just for me. <laughs> Bakeries are always joyful. This is my... I'm just buying cake stands. <laughs> <laughs> in the Thanks very you. much indeed. You're a superstar. See you soon. Bye. Right, Helen, let's hit the road, powered entirely by cakes. And with that kind of fuel, we're making short work of the Yorkshire roads. The beauty spot of Thorpe Perrow awaits, and it's a lovely drive. I think it's quite good that Helen doesn't have power steering, you know. You really feel every curve in the road. You know, when you watch car adverts and there's a brand new car that's just gliding through the countryside, they, they haven't lived, those people. You haven't lived until you've wrenched with great force a steering wheel around a bend in a road in Yorkshire. <laughs> and for now, I'm wrenching Helen towards Thorpe Perrow. The Arboretum is one of the best private collections of trees and shrubs in Britain. The oldest part dates all the way back to the 16th century. I love coming to an Arboretum for a start. Excellent word. Secondly, I mean, it's a celebration of trees. And it's such a commonplace thing, trees, but they should be absolutely celebrated. They're so important and so very, very beautiful. And on a day like this, with the sun shining through, making little beautiful pools of gorgeousness, it is the perfect place to be. I'm meeting a fellow tree enthusiast. Faith, it's gorgeous to meet you in this beautiful place. Tell me, what's your association with this arboretum? Uh, so I'm the curator. I've been here 14 years. I've got the best job in the world. Yes. Faith runs classes here and she's going to help me get closer to nature. Is it about a mindset? Yes, yeah, opening up our senses. You know, what can we see? What can we hear? What can we feel? What can we smell? What can we taste? Mm -hmm. The first sense we're focusing on is touch. She's got a beautiful shape to her. It's an incredible tree. Do you talk to the tree or do you just...? Often I just, I just lean against. That's what I oh, do. Oh, so a lean could be fine, yeah, couldn't it? lean against. Very nice support, you're right. And apparently some of the trees have healing properties. This is an Italian alder. OK. It has not only cones growing at yeah. this time of the year, but it also has the flowers, the catkins. Same Lovely. Time, which is quite exciting. These catkins are actually edible. OK. 
So this is a bit of catkin. Yeah, this is catkin, and this is really good for headaches. Just... Oh, <laughs> your face is not filling me with... Is it, is it monkey? It's still monkey. It's bitter. <laughs> Yum. So this is for headaches? Yeah. It's going to be an unusual taste because we have a sweet diet now, and actually, yeah, it's bitter. It's probably... <laughs> <laughs> the most bitter thing you've ever tasted in your life, but it's good for us. <laughs> it's creating a lot of saliva for you. <laughs> now, I'm going to be really honest, I might take just an ibuprofen. <laughs> well, that was really delicious. <laughs> and my headache. headache's completely gone. <laughs> Obviously, this should only be tried when you're with an expert. And even then, I'm not sure I'd recommend it. Hopefully, a nice couple will recharge the taste buds. Faith's colleague, Paul, is putting on a brew. I was expecting perhaps a mobile cafe of some kind, and instead I've got a man who's milking a tree. Tapping. <laughs> so tapping you're the trees. tapping the, this yeah. tree. What's happening is we've got a lot of pressure in this tree. Uh -huh. The sap's just coming out of here into the demijohn. So you're not sucking it out. No. It's coming out of its own accord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Weird thing I never thought I would see. Trees absorb water through their roots. This, combined with minerals, creates the sap. And that's what Paul is going to use to make me tea. The nice thing about this is this is ready to go. This is ready to drink. So if we were to take water out of the ground, we'd have to filter it and purify it. We don't need to, because the tree's doing that job for us. We have the sap. Now for some extra flavour. If we have a cup of pine needle tea, there's about as much vitamin C in these as about six lemons, six, seven lemons. Absolutely loaded. I mean, that's packed. I didn't realise yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. So that's your six a day sorted. <laughs> so, yeah. And how do you collect the pine needles then? So I'm going to use a knife and just cut them off. Okay. And take them with us. Right, should we go and make some tea? Let's go. Right, bring your sap. <laughs> so this is very much a first for me. What, you haven't had tea in the woods from a tree and a tree sap before? <laughs> no. Ah. I don't know why this is quite... OK, come on now. Right, it's fine. It's no problem. Right, let's try it, OK? It's not like drinking a cup of tea, which is clearly water infused with yeah. tea. It's got a texture to it, which yeah. is not unpleasant in the slightest. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's thicker and more dense. Oh, this is absolutely yeah. cracking. But of course, tea breaks don't last forever. I can see Hello. you've uh, got your cup of tea. Mm -hmm. yep. Are you ready to put it all together? Yes, let's go for it. I might have been a bit too quick to say yes. You're both now standing with no shoes on. What is this that we're about to do? Barefoot walking. Barefoot walking. Yep. But I have a suspicion it's not just walking barefoot, no, is it? What, what else? Not. We're going to blindfold you. I enjoy the matter of fact we say, I'm just going to blindfold yeah, you. Yeah. Right, OK. Uh, we very much rely on our eyes as our primary sense. Mm -hmm. And of course, we've got touch, we've got smell, we've got hearing, and most importantly, we've, we've also got intuition. You're connected through your bare feet. You've got your sight taken away, so you have to rely yeah. on the other senses. Yeah. And you've got something, so this is what you use, so you have to be able to follow the drum. Yeah, yeah, so you'll hear the noise that I'm making, and remember, sound is vibration, so you feel it as well. Mm -hmm. And it will vibrate off the trees around us as well, okay. and so you will be able to feel the right way to go. All right, let's do it. I'll get my shoes and socks off. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's yeah. do it before I change my mind. OK, let's do it, let's do it. I'll go get my shoes and socks off, OK? Right, right. Yorkshire never fails to surprise me. I can feel the air. You stay with me, Paul, in case I take a really bad turn, OK? Yeah, OK. OK. Ready to go. Ready to go. Shall I turn you around a couple of times? No, nope, you're absolutely... You I, think think? We're, I think we'll just do this. Barefoot walking is apparently good for stress. I'm not sure the blindfold is helping my stress levels. Well, I haven't bumped into anything yet. I might just manage this. I'm nearly there, aren't I, Faith? You are. <laughs> I can feel the vibrations. There we are. Am I there? You are. Oh, <laughs> nice one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well done. That was... Yeah. That was actually quite extraordinary. I was doing what you said, which is you feel yeah, your way feel. through. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
but it was the sound I could definitely could feel it. I could feel it. I yep. could absolutely feel it. Yeah. That is really disorienting though, because without without the sight, you rely on everything else. You've got to be very present. Yeah. Into yourself, yeah. but also receiving, receiving what's going on. But I could yeah. hear I could hear the differences in the drums. Yep. That yeah. was extraordinary. A fantastic feast for all the senses. Coming up, I slip into something more comfortable. This is a bit better. <laughs> and something less comfortable. Oh, this is cold. There's still time to enter for a chance to win your own week-long camper vanning experience in Wales for up to four people, courtesy of Taffy Campers. Pick up your camper van in Pontypridd and set off through the South Welsh coast, exploring the stunning Gower Peninsula and beyond. To enter, text ROAD to 65555 or post your name and phone number to ROAD, PO Box 7557, Derby, DE1, 0NP. Rules, winners, privacy policy and customer care at channel5.com forward slash win. Good luck! I'm on an adventure around the stunning Yorkshire Valleys with my favourite travelling companion. I mean, look how beautiful it is here. Yorkshire is a stunning part of the country. Always love visiting here. Helen loves it because of the bouncy roads. I found a lovely spot to spend some quality time getting a little bit creative. I put my glasses on because I'm going to do some crafting. Um, I was so inspired by the beautiful stained glass I saw in New York Minster that I want to have, like, a little memory of that with Helen. And I thought the daffodils, which are all over Yorkshire at the moment, would be the perfect things. I love crafting. You know, back in the day when we didn't have tablet computers and mobile telephonic devices, if it was a rainy day, you did some crafting. So this is the green of the daffodils. This is what I would call a Kalman-sized masterpiece. And I'm sure an expert at uh, putting together stained glass might say, these aren't appropriate colours to go with each other. But I like them. So that is me finished. Find uh, somewhere to put it now. Time for the unveiling. And I've managed the impossible. Helen looks even better. Sheeps. Beautiful. Here's another cattle grid vibrato. Uh, perfect. Thank you, Helen. For the last leg of our journey, we're heading south, looping back as I have one more stop to make in lovely Harrogate. Known as the English Spa, it became a popular tourist destination in the 18th century. People flocked here to drink the healing spring waters. Turkish baths became common in Victorian times and Harrogate has the most fully restored working Victorian baths in the country. Therapist Jessica is showing me around. This place already is pretty wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Can I have a look? Come on, then. Okay. <laughs> look at this, all the original... Changing rooms, this is absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? This already is beyond my expectations. It's very grand from our, our entrance where you walk in to yeah. walking into here. It has a real sense of grandeur in here, uh -huh. um, which is what the Victorians like. They wanted to be able to go in for afternoon tea and mm -hmm. then I've, I've spent all day in the Turkish bath <laughs> and, and basically <laughs> brag. After falling into disrepair, these Turkish baths have been meticulously restored to their original Victorian splendour. We were very lucky that we had black and white photos, so all the stencil work is exactly the same. This is the original flooring. That is stunning. The floor is it's, absolutely it's stunning. It's gorgeous. The theory behind the spa was to experience heating and cooling with the aim of cleansing the body and relaxation. And now I'm here. 
This is a bit better. <laughs> Let's go for a wander around. One of the signature treatments is the heat rooms, a series of spaces that gets progressively hotter. I'm starting in the coolest. Not that you'd know. Oh, you know when you get off a plane in a hot country and you think, oh, that's what this is like when you open the door. This is summer holiday, absolutely baking hot. You've been out for the entire day and you know it's time to go and have a lie down. This is really quite warm. I'm not sure I want to open that curtain. As soon as you get closer and closer, you can feel it. Do you know what it feels like? It feels like my granny's living room when she'd had the four bar fire on all afternoon. You know that way, and you know when your, your face is painful, that's what it, so let's see. Oh. It's me! Oh, you could bake one of those fat rascal cakes in here. I think this is probably the hottest I have ever been. And I think, I think this is, I mean, shall we? <laughs> We've come this far, haven't we? And finally, the hottest room in the building. It's about 58 centigrade. And I can feel every degree. My hair is warm. My hair is warm. <laughs> My hair is warm! This is the hottest I have ever been. I, <laughs> I think I'm just going to move to a cooler area before all that's left of me is a tiny puddle on the floor. But that's not the end of the spa. Apparently, the change from hot rooms to cold water is very therapeutic. I just need a moment. I know, I'm sitting here like a child waiting for their mum to go, will you just get in that pool, Susan? <laughs> I'm gonna get in that pool. Just give me a minute. <sighs> <sighs> okay. <sighs> okay. <sighs> That's the sound of someone cooling down very quickly. I feel better, I get it because it's just it's that slight shock from there to here. And after the initial, whoa, it feels, yeah. This is the perfect place to finish my adventure in Yorkshire. It's got history and tradition, but with a bit of a modern twist. I have to say, Yorkshire's given me a bit of a shock this time, much like this plunge pool. There was so much I didn't know about. But do you know what? It is worth a visit every time. Excuse me whilst I glide away. Next time, I'm in Devon and the South Coast. Ah! Oh, my goodness. Following in the footsteps of one of my favourite authors, for a woman who writes about murder, she doesn't half make me cry. And turning my fingers green. That one looks quite a good one. With prehistoric marvels both above oh, 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 oh. and below ground. <gasps> Look at this place. There's so much to see. I've seen a buzzard. I've seen a gent's rhino. And sample. That smells nicer than my perfume. And you can see that next Friday at 8. She's going all out to beat that deadline ahead of Dementia Action Week. Don't miss Challenge Annika, the Dementia Special, brand new Sunday at 7.30. Coming up, can the poet detective uncover the truth about the murder room? Channel 5 original drama Dalgleish continues, new next.